Hello and welcome back to Computing at Baldwin Senior High School. This is my screencast to show you what we do with the Java programming language and AP Computer Science. Please view Computer Science Honors screencast first. I don't want to repeat a lot of what we said. Okay, so let's start. The very first program we write is a Hello World program because it's the easiest one to write and understand. What this one does, well, all Java programs have a main, uh, main method or static function and has to do at least some output, so this thing just prints hello world on the screen. So how does that work? Well, we Java C it, hello one.java, and then we Java it. There you go, that's all it does. Now look what I have here. This, this is some demo, these are some demo files I have for you. So we're gonna do a bunch of hello world programs, then we're gonna do a static class, with functions like in Python, and then we're going to do an object-oriented uh, program with uh, uh, with a non-static class. Okay. All right. So let's do hello two. Let's see Java C hello two. Let's see what happens. Okay, hello two, and then Java it, and you come into a runtime error, a semantic error. Why? Well, let's take a look at the code. Let's take a look at hello two dot Java. Hello 2 is a little bit more intricate. It has input from args and output from print line, and args are, uh, the args are taken from the command line. So it's looking for two names, two strings, and it's going to say something like, Hello Dave, how about a nice game of chess with Hal? Something like that. Ah, so we're missing input, that's all. So let's do that. Java Hello 2, Dave and Hal. There you go. Hello Dave, how about a nice game of chess with Hal? Or um, how about Mary and John? Hello, Mary. How about a nice game of chess with John? Okay, so that's a, a CLI or command line interface program. Let's try something else. Um, how about, oh, how about this? Let's Java C Hello 3. And let's Java Hello 3. This one won't have an error. Because what it does is it uses GUI input. So you have uh, input dialog boxes, output dialog boxes, uh, re you know, uh, pull down menus, radio buttons, all the stuff that you're used to in a windowed environment, you can put into your Java programs. So let's say I uh, put in Al. Hello, Al. How about a nice game of chess? Or um, Jane. Hello, Jane. How about a nice game of chess? Okay. Now, let's take a look, well, what was that? Let's take a look at the code in uh, my math tester. My math tester is a little bit more intricate. It tests several math methods that I made up, a factorial method, a Fibonacci method, um, a combinatorics method, using it to create a Pascal's triangle, what? Pascal's triangle comes from combinatorics, comes from Factorials, really? All right, so that's my uh, static uh, class. Uh, I'm testing my static class, my math. Let's take a look at my math. Where is it? Where is my math? There it is. And so my math has a bunch of static methods or functions in it. So this is almost like Python. We have little for loops, and a combo row uses combo and uh, combo could use factorial, but I changed it, and here's how you do factorial, and here's how you do Fibonacci sequences. All right, let's see how this thing runs. Let's go back to the shell, or the terminal, and Java C that. I'm gonna Java C um, my math tester. My math tester, that Java. And then I'm gonna run it. Doesn't take any input from here, so this is good. And look what it did. It had it started off with a loop, which generated the first ten um, factorials: zero factorials, one, one factorials, one, two factorials, two, three factorials, six, four factorials, twenty-four. Right? That's right. Did you know that zero factorial was one? If not, this doesn't work for Pascal's triangle. And then here's Fibonacci. Do you know the Fibonacci sequence? One plus one is two. One plus two is three. Two plus three is five. Three plus five is eight. But look what I did here. What I did here was I printed out a uh, well, a limit. These numbers are getting closer and closer and closer together. They converge if I made k large enough. But what I'm doing is I'm 
printing out the value of fib sub k over fib sub k minus 1. So 1 divided by 1 is 1, 2 divided by 1 is 2, 3 divided by 2 is 1.5, 5 divided by 3 is um, 1 and 2 thirds, 1.6 repeating, uh, 8 divided by 5 is 1 and 3 fifths, 1.6, 13 divided by 8 is 1 and 5 eighths, or 1.625, and so forth. But if you did this long enough, you'd get closer and closer and closer. Look, the 1s start to match, then the 1.6s start to match, the 1.61, and the 1.618, the 1.6180, 1.61080, Three and I didn't go far enough to get all of these match, but to match, but eventually they do. This is called the golden mean. It's a famous number. It's called cap phi, and it's uh, equal to one my, uh, one plus rad five all over two. By the way, okay. And here's some more number crunching. Uh, here we calculated four c two is six. Did you know that these numbers are in Pascal's triangle? This is Pascal's triangle, right? One 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 two one one three three one. Right? Three is two plus one. Six is 3 plus 3, 10. Uh, where am I? Whoops, 15 is 10 plus 15, and 10 plus 5, and so forth. Uh, but look, 4C2 is 6, really? Go down 4 over 2, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 0, 1, 2. Yeah, there you go. All right, so that's just a demonstration that uh, factorials have to do with combinatorics, and combinatorics have to do with Pascal. So that's some number crunching, and that's phi, and that's uh, factorials. All kinds of crazy stuff, okay? All right, let's take a look at a real class. Here's the Dart class. Let's see, Dart, Dart Simulator Java. This is our main method. Uh, it takes uh, arg0 input. Uh, what it is is the number of trials that you're throwing a Dart. We construct a Dart object called MyDart from the Dart class using the Dart constructor. And then we make this loop go trials times, 10 times, 100 times, whatever. And what it does is it figures out how many times it figures out four times how many times you hit a target over how many times you throw the dart. Now, what does that mean? Well, take a look at uh, the dart class. The dart class has some uh, private instance fields, how many hits on the target, how many tries at the target, and random number generator. Ah, here we go again. This is uh, game theory, right? Trying to simulate something using randomness. So the Dart constructor just starts out hits at zero, initializes tries to zero, initializes a random object, an object of the random class, and look what happens when the toss mutator operates. It generates a random number from negative one to two, a random double, a random in, uh, decimal number. And y is also so that you have what you have is basically a two by two square target. But what we want to do is count how many times we hit the unit circle inside that square target. And it can be shown that the probability, the theoretical probability of doing that is pi over 4. But the empirical probability, the prob what you actually get by doing it a number of, a couple of times, 10, 20 times, um, isn't pi over 4. It gets close to pi over 4 if you do millions and billions of darts. Okay, so we're going to try and simulate that. And so, and so the probability is pi over 4, but notice what we're printing. Uh, what are we printing? We're printing four times pi over four, so we're estimating pi is what we're doing, we're estimating pi. All right, so let's try this. Yeah, man, wake up. So let me clear this, and let me java c dart simulator dot java. Dart simulator dot java. Okay, and let's run it. Now remember, it takes arg zero input for how many darts, right? So I've got to put, I don't know, 10 darts. So it, it says what percent done. Well, 10% is one dart, 20% is two darts, 100% is 10 darts. And we're trying to estimate pi is not a good estimate, is it? All right, let's try 100 darts. Now, this takes a long time to converge. Eh, three. Eh, it's getting there. We really should use, like, a supercomputer for this, but we don't have one right now. 3.14, that's not too bad. Yeah, it's 1,000 darts. How about 10,000 darts? Eh, a little bit of an overestimate. Yeah, about 100,000 darts. Yeah, it's taken a while, so we really need a little more horsepower for this to work, but you see that we are getting pretty close to 3.14. And come on, come on, come on, you can do it. Yeah, close, close. Okay, so you get the idea. All right, so that's your game theory in Java. All righty, what else? We also do little graphics. We do this thing called Grid World which simulates like, a, 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 well, it's basically like graph paper where we have bugs running around. 
And let's see if I can show you that. Let's go to, let's see, here. Let's go here, let's go here, let's go here, and let's go here. All right, so here's Bug Runner. All right, so this is a tester uh, class, a main class, a main method, and what it does is it creates an a actor world object we call the world. It's in the actor world class and the act, using the actor world constructor. It just sets up a grid like graph paper. Okay. And then into this world, we have the add mutator, which adds a bug at a random location and another one that adds a rock at a random location, then we show the world. Okay, great. And let's take a look at what, uh, what this does. Whoops. Let's see. Boom. All right, so I got a CD somewhere weird. Hang on. Do I have that CD in here somewhere? I know I have it in somewhere. I had it. CD that. Okay. All right, there you go. Now, I Java seed this already, but just to show you the Java C line, it gets a little bit crazy. Where is it? I had it, Java C, Java C stuff. I just had it. There it is, Java C. All right, so I want uh, Bug Runner. There you go. And then I want a Java hit, so let's take, get rid of the .java and Bug Runner .java and the C in Java C, and you get a graphical environment. So the bug was placed randomly in this location, and the rock was placed randomly in this location. Look what the bugs do. Um, when, when you hit step, they act. And the act method, the standard act method for the bug class says basically, if it can move, move, otherwise turn. And it can't move if it's, if it's obstructed in the direction it's going. And if it can't move, then if it can't move, move, else turn. And if it the turn method just turns 45 degrees. So look what it does. Step, 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 step. Look, it can't move, so turn 45 degrees. It still can't move. Turn 45 degrees, step, step, step. And you can make it run a whole bunch of trial uh, steps on its own and make it go fast. And so you get the idea. Okay, that's not very exciting. But the idea here is to extend the bug class and make subclasses that uh, morph the bug into something else. Okay, so we're talking about polymorphism and inheritance and all kinds of crazy object-oriented uh, concepts. So let's clear that. By the way, if I run it again, remember the bug and the rock are placed in random locations. There you go. And run it again. There you go. And now look what happens if I run it. Eventually, it's going to slam into the rock, right? Da -da 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 Whoa, boom. There you go. Okay, so you get the idea. All right, so let's, uh, let's play with this. Let's go take a look at um, box bug. Box bug. What is that about? Well, let's see. I think that's here and then here. There it is. Box bug runner. Java. There you go. All right. So look what this thing does. Again, it creates a world, but now it creates two box bug objects. One is called Alice. One is called Bob. It's called a box bug because it's going to make a square pattern, and this one's going to be a square of side six and a square of side th uh, three. The big one, Alice, is orange, and the little one. Bob is, well, they default to red unless you change it. And then we're adding Al the Alice object to the world object, add an unnamed object of uh, the location class at 7, 8, and Bob at 5, 5. So these are not randomly located. Okay, so let's see. Let's take a look at uh, Boxbug itself. Look what it does. The act method is different. Uh, if, if it can move, it moves, and then it keeps track of how many steps it's done. So if the steps are too big, it'll, it'll stop also. If steps is less than side length, it moves. If it's greater than or equal to side length, it stops moving, and it does this, it'll turn twice. Why twice? Because I want a square. And turn goes 45 degrees. This will give me 90. And then we reset steps to zero to keep track of how far you've gone on the next side. All right, let's run this. So let's Java C box bug runner. Wait, I'm not in the right uh, folder, am I? Wait, hang on. Am I in the right folder? I'm in uh, first project. I can't, no, I got to get out of here. Hang on. CD dot dot uh, box bug. Box bug. There it is. CD box bug. And I'm screencasting for YouTube right, right. right now. I'm recording.
right now. Okay, just one, give me a minute. Okay, and let's see. So am I in there? Uh, yes, I am. So let's Java C that. Java C, Java C, Java C, Java C that. All right, so I want box bug runner, right? So here we go. Box bug runner. Whoops, what's that? Box bug runner dot Java. Did I see it? Yep, there you go. And then run it this way. Dun, 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 dun. Boom. And so this is supposed to be orange, okay? So the big one's orange. It's a side length of six. It's not going to be able to make a right turn and complete the square, so it's going to have to do a lot of turns and do something else. Here's the little guy. He can probably fit in here. Let's see what happens. Yep, the red guy's good. And the yellow guy banged into here, and then they had room there. There, you're done. Good. All righty. Let's see. How about Sparrow Bug? Sparrow Bug does a little thing, except that it increases the side length each time it turns. So it doesn't look like a squared anymore. Let's see. Here's Sparrow Bug. Sparrow Bug. Boom. And let's run that. Ding, ding, ding. All righty. Sparrow bug. And let's see how this works. It's like a box bug, but the side length gets longer and longer and longer. So look what you get. A little spiral pattern. Isn't that beautiful? Okay. Okay, so you get the idea. Now take a look at this one. This one's weird. Dancing bug. Dancing bug runner. Dancing bug, it, instead of turning 45 degrees each time, it'll turn one times that when, when it's obstructed. And then if it's obstructed again, three times 45 degrees, and then four times, and then it does this pattern over and over and over again. Take a look at the dancing bug class. It uses an in, a static integer array called turn list, which we pass from the tester, and we store that there. And then what it does is it keeps track of how many steps it's done, and if that's more than the length of the static array, we mod it, we divide by that, and we look at the remainder, and what happens is it, this, it resets back to the number, to the length of the um, array. So we never run out of stuff. It keeps on repeating the array over and over again. And, ooh, the super, ooh, the super stuff. Well, let's not get into that right now. So let's try this. This is um, dancing bug. Okay, so Java see it. Dancing bug. There you go. And Java it. Whoops. And this. And there you go. Run it. Now it starts banging into walls a lot. You know, I'm going to stop this. Let's make the world a little bit bigger. How about 20 by 20 instead of 10 by 10? Yeah, man. Yeah, man. All right, now let's run it and let's make it go fast. So here we get sort of like a random walk type of thing. It's not really random, but you get a weird pattern again. All right, so if you're interested in any of this kind of stuff, please take AP Computer Science next year. Hope to see you there uh, next year. And bye-bye. See you later. Come on. Come on, you can do it.